Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to take another dive into an Elden Ring Talisman. This time we're going to take a look at the Source Seal and to a lesser extent the Scar Seal. And specifically Radagon's Source Seal. You should never use Merica's Source Seal. The defense increase is not worth the damage loss. And since you're not buffing Vigor Endurance, Strength or Dexterity, which are used in every build, there's no point to using it because at most you'd be doing a Intelligence Faith, Faith Arcane, Intelligence Arcane build, and you would still not need those stats, that five of those stats that America's Source Seal is granting you. Now, for the dive. Little brief introduction, Radigan Scar Seal raises Vigor, Endurance, Strength, and Dexterity by three each, but increases damage taken by 10%. And it drops from the ancient hero of Zamor in the Weeping Peninsula. Radigan's right Source Seal raises their endurance, strength, and dexterity by 5 points each, but increases damage taken by 15%. From the Fort Pharaoh's side of Grace, run into the fort, climb up the ladder, and make a right. Run past the first hole in the floor, jump down the second one, run northeast, turn towards the right, then make a running jump to another platform uh, to the right. Past the rats and down the ladder is the talisman. So the reason that Radagon's Source Seal and Scar Seal are considered good for PvE is the flat increase to attribute points are more important, more impactful in the early game. At later levels, it can often be a safer choice to use a different complementary talisman to your build and avoid the additional damage taken. Typically, this makes Source Seal not use it not worth using by level 80 to 100, where most builds should be nearing their first damage cap. Now there is relevant builds that will use Source Seal past level 80 or to 100, but for the most part, 100 is kind of that cap where you don't really need Source Seal anymore, you can get away with using something else. But here's a comparison between Source Seal versus Scar Seal versus just using Great Jar's Arsenal. In the specific comparison between Source Seal and Scar Seal, both are compared using the Lightning Abikiba against a PvP optimized armor set and stat setup. So let's analyze the data. Scar Seal provides a 0.93% damage increase, but it comes with a 9.3 damage defense decrease compared to using Great Jar's Arsenal. And the Source Seal provides a 3.6 damage increase but it also has a 14.5% damage negation decrease. Source Seal offers significantly higher damage output compared to Scar Seal. This suggests that if your primary goal is to maximize the damage you deal, Source Seal is the better choice. However, it's important to note that Source Seal also increases the damage taken to a greater extent. In PvE, Radagon Source Seal is worth using until you get 60 vigor, all relevant weapon soft caps, and enough endurance and mind to where you feel comfortable. In arena, it heavily depends on setup. In arena, the hits to kill is what matters, so if you are on a setup that when you use Radagon Source Seal to increase your hits to kill, it is worth using, assuming your, your hits taken to kill is the same. Most setups, that's not the case. There are some hybrid setups, such as Carrion's Tree Spear, Cold Bandits, and weapons like that, where the hits to kill the enemy is increased, but the hits taken to die is the same. And in that case, yes, it is worth using Radagon Sorcerer. It is never worth using in competitive PvP, and that is where my main comparison and data was pulled from, was competitive PvP. So obviously, that is done in seamless co-op, where you can use a rune arc and have a great rune activated. So the health is a lot higher. Non rune arc, non uh, wonders physic health, such as arena, you're probably only in that 19 to 2100 health range. But if you are in seamless, you can get to 3400, depending on your setup. And that is also including the health gained from the Crimson Bubble Tier. The hits to kill disproportionately affects Radagon Source Seal and Scar Seal in competitive PvP where you're in Seamless and you have that extra HP and extra damage negation. 
in Arena. Like I said, it doesn't really matter that much. And I'm going to put on screen the, some of my other testing that I did, which is going in-depth towards the damage taken versus damage done, and then also the hits to kill. And then I'm also going to show a PvE build that I whipped up during testing. And this build is also using the Grapta Blade Greatsword as a hard swap. And that's going to give you 5 points in each stat, similar to Yodra's Great Rune, when you use the weapon art, the Oath of Vengeance. So as you can see, we're level 96, and we have 60 Vigor, 80 Faith, and plenty of leftover stats such as mind endurance strength and dexterity past their weapon requirements that is something that a 150 build would struggle with if you didn't have sword seal or god's retreat rune or crap to blade greatsword and with golden vow and black flames protection we have 65 percent damage negation and if we weren't using radagon sword seal it would be 70 percent so the damage negation decrease is not relevant in PvE, assuming you can buff stack, which in all instances you should be able to do. We have the damage and survivability of an endgame build while being at a mid-game level. In summary, Sword Seal generally provides higher damage output across different qualities, but it also increases damage to a greater extent compared to Scar Seal. The choice between the two leans significantly towards Sword Seal, but as I said, neither is a good choice for competitive PvP. In Arena, it is very setup dependent. And in PvE, you should basically always be using it, unless you can soft cap your stats. 